Hello everybody, today I'd like to do a quick review of a very unique USB enclosure. Hope you enjoy the video. Hello everybody, today I want to do this uh, quick review on a product that's actually a first for me. We've done a lot of USB enclosures, um, uh, even uh, multiple M.2 to SATA enclosures. But this is actually the first that actually supports NVMe that I have tested. So I'm anxious to get this thing together, find out how it's going to work. We'll run it through some performance testing and um, we'll see how, how it all ends up at the end. So let's get started with putting this together. First of all, take a look at what's in the box. Uh, it comes with the device itself, which is well snapped in there and of course the usual flurry of the screws a little screwdriver and looks like a couple of cables looks like we have a USB C to USB A and USB C to USB C so they've kind of covered us here from for different configurations so the first thing we want to do, uh, and I'm going to run, to pair up with this, I'm going to run this uh, Samsung 970 Evo. And this is, of course, uh, an NVMe M.2. So this will ought to be a pretty good test because I know how, how well these perform under normal conditions. So we'll get to see how they perform in a USB 3.1 enclosure. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is actually slide this cover out. And this thing's kind of slick the way they did it. Um, it actually looks like it just slides apart, which makes it really convenient. And from that point on, we can take out the entire board. So that basically exposes the entire circuit board that's in there. So with that, we can now mount the pads. And we'll mount the SSD holder as well. So let's go ahead and put the drive in there. And then we'll attach this. We'll put that little screw in there. We'll put the hold the uh, drive holder there that kind of clips right in there. And then we'll go ahead and put the locking screw in. Okay, so there we have it. So now the drive is mounted in there. Right there, and we're now ready to install the heatsink. Now, one of the things I did not like about this unit is the actual heatsink or the, the thermal pads is actually way too small. Um, I prefer to cover the entire thing, and it looks like they only gave us a little bit of the thermal pad. So rather than use this pad because I don't like not covering the whole thing. I'm actually going to use my own pad. I have a, always have a bunch of these left over anyway because they're different sizes. Um, I also buy a bunch of these separately. So it looks like, judging from the size, this pad should do just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and use this particular pad to actually mount on the drive. This way I get full coverage. And so it's a little disappointing that they don't include the pad, um, full coverage pad. This, you'll have to be careful where you put this because you've got um, only two small sections. So you need to make sure you cover the, pri the right chips, which is some, not something we should have to worry about. For an extra five cents of pads, they should have included it. 
but so far everything else looks like it's really kind of slick. Okay, so now let's put the rest of this together. So we've got the pad on, we've got the drive mounted. So we're just going to drop this back in. So the drive is now almost in position. Okay, so that should be good. And now we're ready to slip the heat sink back on. So let's see how that how easy that goes back in. Okay, well that was pretty easy actually. Okay, so now we've got the unit, the drive, everything's back in place. Looks like we're getting some pretty good contact. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward to, to uh, put together. And now we're going to go ahead and give it a test and see what happens. Uh, I'm going to try to zoom in here so you can kind of see a little bit more of the construction. I'm going to just pop it off real quick. And so there you kind of see how the board fits in. Pretty straightforward. You got the USB connector in the back. This just kind of sits in there. And then there's a kind of a slide feature on the side. So you actually drop, you can press down. You can feel the pad a little bit pressed when you press down. And then you just kind of clip it forward and it's very secure. So it's pretty easy the way they've put they've made this together. It's also very simple to take out and actually um, you know, replace the drive if you want to get something larger. Overall, the construction is really good. Only disappointment so far has been the pad size, and that's easily resolved if you happen to have extra pads. If you don't, uh, that's a different problem. You'll have to try and figure out exactly where the chips are that need to be covered, and I'm sure that information is available on Google, especially for things, things like Samsung drives where you want to properly position the pads. But, you know, overall, it's a very nice little unit. And now what we're ready to do is um, um, go ahead and plug it in and let's give her a test and see how this thing actually performs. Okay, so let's get in to see how this thing actually performs. So I'm gonna go ahead and initialize it because normally when you plug a, a fresh drive in, it's gonna force you to initialize. So let's go to disk management. And there's the new drive, so I'm going to click OK down here. So there we have it. Let me go ahead and create a new volume. I'm just going to accept the defaults here. Arico. Click Next, Finish, Cancel that. So there's my new drive. So now I should be able to do some benchmarking. So let's see how that works out. So we've got the benchmark screen and we're going to go ahead and load. I believe that was the iDrive and let's run our first set of tests and let's see how that works out. So I'm going to go ahead So I've got this attached to a um, USB 3.1 using the supplied cable, so I haven't used any of my own cables or anything. The cables it comes with seem to be adequate. They're short. I may test it on some longer cables to see if it has the same performance, but for now I'm just going to leave everything as you would get it out of the box. For portability, the shorter cable is obviously better, you know, and you can, especially if you're going to use it on a laptop or something like that. So let's go ahead and give that started and see what that looks like. Okay, as you can see from the performance charts, this thing is performing extremely well. 
I'm going to try a traditional file copy to see how well it performs in copying from uh, a local drive to the USB drive. Okay, so what I have here is a um, test movie which I've copied to one of my internal drives, which happens to be a, an uh, M.2 uh, Samsung as well. So now we'll get to measure the performance going from a native system drive to copy onto the external drive itself. Let's see what kind of performance we get. Well, as you can see, this thing just flying right along. Um, this is probably one of the best performing USB drives I've ever encountered for a single drive. Um, it, you know, obviously cannot tap the full capability of an NV, uh, NVMe drive, but it's certainly maxing out and exploiting the full bandwidth of USB 3.1. So overall, I'm really impressed. Um, it does run a bit warm, as all NVMe drives do, so you need to be aware of that. Um, I measured it at approximately 120 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is the, the temperature of the red heat sink that's on the outside of the enclosure. And that's when it was being hammered with everything, so it was running basically at, uh, you know, non-stop. So it wouldn't be what you would normally see under smaller file usage or anything like that. This was the maximum temperature I saw. So overall, I'm really impressed with this thing. Um, it certainly is, is fast, it's consistent, um, and it was really easy to put together. The only negative I'll say is that um, you kind of have to prepare for some slightly different pads. So I would make sure that you have uh, some additional pads available that you can apply to the top of the, uh, especially if you're running a Samsung. Some of the other devices have a different pad or a different chip arrangement, but the Samsung prefers to have heat sinking pads across the entire top. So I would make sure I have a little bit of those extra um, or purchase some with, you know, if you have some from another device, that'll work out too. Just make sure you get a little bit more on there. It's the only disappointment I have. Otherwise, the drive is fantastic. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the quick overview. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And as always, please subscribe. Check the notifications so you'll be notified of future. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.